Hello everybody, this is a Lighthouse Hall of Fame film from the European server. It's Einstein in his PZ-38NA. We are in Fisherman's Bay, Standard Mode, South Spawn. One artillery apiece, two scouts apiece, enemy teams mostly heavies and TDs with one medium thrown in. His team has three mediums, so they're slightly more mobile. Probably going to be a slugfest. This map tends to play on the west side and in town some skirmishing in the middle looks like he's going to pull forward get some spots early on straight up the center and it also looks like hardly anybody's going to town <laughs> except the AMX ELC piss good luck holding the town there little roach you may be king of New York City but you're not going to do well in Fisherman's Bay by yourself Now this this building you can't destroy and it has a TD on the back side of it. <laughs> People are trying to destroy it anyway. And I think he's thinking that's not a good place to stay because with that TD sitting there waiting for him to poke his nose out, there's not a whole lot he can do. So he's going to reposition. SU-85 waiting to die up there. We didn't penetrate their armor. We didn't even scratch them. And at this point you start wondering, hmm, maybe the enemy didn't send a contingent into town either because there's nobody coming out the bottom side yet, of course. They may be treating it cautiously. There's KV-2 and AMX AC-46 down there. Definitely got to keep in watch on that side of the field. What happens in a case like this is if the west side pushes, they'll probably break through on the west just as the enemy team will break through in town. And then victory goes to whichever team drops back on defense most effectively. Because if one team drops back and the other team doesn't, or the other team only drops back one or two tanks, they're going to lose. Because they're going to be outnumbered at the point of attack and after the team who dropped back in mass wins at their spawn or cap, they'll just turn around and overwhelm the few tanks that went back on defense for the other team. It may seem counterintuitive if you are making a breakthrough on a flank to stop the attack and shift back on defense, but if if the majority of your attack, unless I'm talking about where you break through about the same time as the enemy breaks through on opposing flanks, obviously if your flank's holding up, then you're not going to stop your attack, you're going to press on and win. But um, if both teams achieve a breakthrough on opposing flanks, then the, the team that drops back ends up having a huge advantage because of pubs and the fact that there's nobody calling fights and even if somebody's trying to, the majority of people don't listen. When a team breaks through in a flank, the faster tanks tend to speed on ahead and the slower tanks bring up the rear lagging behind and so you don't have a coordinated assault and if you drop back with any numbers on defense you get to pick off the tanks as they come in one one and two at a time and in rapid fashion you've created the numerical advantage in the fight and once you finish off defending cap then you go and attack with whoever their defenders are and you're, you're two to one odds Enemy armor 
The trick is getting enough people to come back to mount an effective defense and have numbers at the point of attack. KV-3's capping. I think, it, no, KV-2's capping. He's not going to be capping for long. dead. Now there's the KV-3. As long as that Dickermax keeps looking west, he's okay. If the Dickermax turns his attention on Einstein, then he's in a bad spot. And I think he realizes that he's not really in a good position because he's being attacked from two ways. And all it takes is for the Dicker Max to go, oh, look at that juicy little kill south of me. Now it's not an issue because the Dicker Max dies, but look what's happened now. They have a two tank lead, only two, only their two big heavies stayed on the attack. Everybody else dropped back to defend. They were able to defeat the enemy's assault on their, on their cap. And now they'll be able to shift their attention back to the north, have a numerical advantage, and this should be... A victory for them now. Had only a couple tanks tried to defend, they would have been overwhelmed and they probably would be on the losing end of the battle right now. I was about to say he can hurt this guy from the side. as he can the OI experimental is just he doesn't want to stay spotted by that guy because he can mess up his day pretty fast. Trading tanks down to the point where it's three on five. As long as you're ahead on numbers and you're not making really stupid trades like giving up a, a four for an eight or something or a four for a seven, then trading when you're ahead is great. Attrition is a wonderful ally when you have numerical advantage. tanks to go. Pretty certain the heavy's up in here somewhere. Not certain where the 304 is. One would think the 304 will be up here somewhere, but it, it's hard to tell with 304s because they're speedy enough that sometimes they get delusions of grandeur and start doing crazy things on the map. He's going to die because he shot and missed. He won't get to shoot again. And now, just the OI experimental left, he's taking a little bit of damage. And he doesn't appear to be up in this corner anywhere.
Well, at least he's not speedy. It shouldn't be that hard to find him. Because he's definitely not up here. There he is, down to the south. If the OI Experimental had died and the FE-304 was still left, this could have been a lot more humorous ending. It would have looked like the, the Keystone Cops or the opening sequence to Monty Python where everybody's chasing around a speedy little tank. He's trying to flank him and ends up getting shot for his efforts. But that's okay, if he can get the guy to turn his gun down this way, better chances for the A44 and T29 to move in and finish the job. And there you have it. For this battle, Einstein gets 1,476 damage and 2 kills, 34-45 shooting, which is 78%, 1,154 spotting damage, and 3 spots. He lost 53,970 credits, got 21 points of cap defense, and earned 1,952 XP, survived the fight, got a confederate medal and spotter and fire for effect mini medals it gives him a battle score of 1992 moves him into eighth place on the PZ 38 and a currently the most competitive Hall of Fame we have going he moved up to the middle got some early spots but the J Panther was sitting just to the north of him so he wasn't gonna be able to peek back out so he simply retreated and relocated and got the spot and helped shoot some tanks over on the northwest side of the field. His team had massed over in the west side with hardly any defense in town, so as they pushed north and started to assert their dominance on the western flank, the enemy team came down through town and asserted their dominance on the eastern flank. His team wisely chose to most have almost everybody drop back on defense, and they were able to fairly easily overcome the threat to their cap that gave them a two tank lead which they maintained throughout the rest, the rest of the fight ended up with a three tank victory but the advantage they gained by having so many people drop back on defense and put up a concerted front down by their spawn and cap allowed them to then move on turn their focus back to the north and win fairly easily from that point. It was still contested, but the enemy could never do anything to catch back up. Every time they killed a tank, they lost a tank, and lack of numbers just warmed down. It's something to keep in mind when you, when you, uh, whether you're solo or platoon or whatever. If your flank wins at the same time as the enemy flank achieves a breakthrough, odds are in your favor if as a team you go back and defend your cap the worst case they go back and defend and then you're back where you started where you're both setting out trying to find the other team again most of the time they will press on to attack most of the time they will come in in line formation instead of all together in a group the, the fast tanks get there first, the slow tanks bring up the rear and use as a group, just pick them off as they come and pretty soon, bam, you're in control of the fight. Something to keep in mind if you're ever in a similar situation. In this case, Einstein dropped back, some other tanks dropped back, and then they were able to exploit that advantage to get the win. From Fisherman's Bay, South Spawn Einstein recognizing the situation and dropping back to play D for a little bit so he could win on O later on. Happy hunting.